In this short video, I'm going to show you two cases of acrodermatitis enteropathica, which Antonina Kalmakova of CST Healthcare kindly shared with me. Now, the histology of acrodermatitis enteropathica is one of those it's one of those lesions which is instantly recognizable provided you've seen it before. It's one of those con annoying conditions that you can puzzle over and worry about uh, and not really have a clue as to what you're looking at until somebody says, oh yes, that's a lovely example of acrodermatitis enteropathica. Now, uh, as you know, or you should know, uh, acrodermatitis enteropathica is a very rare disease, and it's due to an abnormality of uh, zinc absorption. And so patients characteristically present uh, with lesions, especially around the mouth and the external genitalia, uh, with erythematous plaques, uh, and sometimes vesicles and sometimes blisters uh, and patients may have a, a glossy tongue. Now um, you may also develop features of acrodermatitis enteropathica as a secondary phenomenon and this is due to a variety of malabsorptive states or uh, in a baby, it may be due to deficiency in the mother's milk, but patients patients with Crohn's disease and uh, celiac disease and, and other causes of malabsorption may give rise to exactly the same features. Now, uh, I'm going to show you the histology of the first case. And um, it, th th this is a very nice, it's a very pretty example. Uh, if we just enlarge it slightly. And uh, when we look at this slide, we can see that the, the stratum corneum in this piece has been largely stripped off. Uh, and the epidermis underneath is a little bit acanthotic. And there's not a lot you can, well, you can perhaps make out, I think you can, if you look carefully uh, and look at that piece of epidermis, which is probably normal or normal-ish, and compare that with there, and you can pick up this, uh, this pallor. The, the epidermis in the top half is a little bit paler than the epidermis in the bottom part. So... That's really what you're looking for, and um, I'll just enlarge it further. And there, there, that's that's what we're looking for. Um, is pallor of the cytoplasm of the upper epidermis. This is an early lesion. There's mild psoriasiform hyperplasia, which is often a feature. And then, if we come across here, we can see there's very marked hyperkeratosis and um, uh, and some parakeratosis. You can see some nuclei still present within the lamellae of the stratum corneum. Now I'm going to get to a lower magnification again and we'll look at this side because this one's a little bit more obvious. And here uh, you can see that there's striking pallor of the cytoplasm underneath the stratum corneum. And we'll go to a higher magnification. And there you are. Uh, now, this, is, th this, in the right context, is, is diagnostic of acrodermatitis enteropathica. But you can get exactly the same histology in early lesions of necrolytic migratory erythema and necrolytic acral erythema and in pellagra and in niacin deficiency and in um, intravenous uh, feeding 
uh, again due to deficiency of of zinc. So it's not it's not a, a an absolute uh, spot diagnosis, but at least you can come down to a a very useful differential diagnosis, and the clinical information about the patient will uh, will make it make the diagnosis obvious. So that's one case. Uh, and in, in this example, the two features we're looking at are the, are the three features, if you like, are the parakeratosis, the cytoplasmic uh, pallor. There is some uh, early evacuation of the keratinocytes, which becomes more pronounced as the lesion progresses. So that's that case, and then we're going to look at another one, if I can just find it, uh, in which it's much more um, advanced. It's somewhere in here. You'll just have to be patient until I find it. There we are. Now this one, as I mentioned, is a little bit more advanced. And uh, if we just enlarge these two images. And here, here we can see very nicely that uh, in this example, there is psoriasiform hyperplasia, which is often a feature of, uh, of um, lesions of established acrodermatitis enteropathica. And if we magnify this up, um, again we can see we can see cytoplasmic pallor, and there is there is some nice um, parakeratosis there. I thought this one was more advanced, but in and in fact it's not really any different. But anyway. Um, this is what you expect to see. So if you can, if you if you can put into your memory bank parakeratosis uh, accompanied by pallor of the cytoplasm is uh, highly suggestive of acrodermatitis enteropathica. And remember the differentials that I've mentioned. Uh, I, I'm disappointed. I thought there was going to be more in this. I'll just make sure there's a, not another one. I don't think there is, because in 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 advanced lesions, you you may also get uh, vesicle formation. You may get blisters because the keratinocytes undergo uh, vacuolation and necrosis. And when they're secondarily infected, which is often the case, you may get pustular formation as well. So it can get um, it can get quite a muddled muddled picture. Okay, well that's really all I can say about the these two biopsies. They're nice examples, and if you haven't seen acrodermatitis enteropathica before. Well, now you've seen two cases, and hopefully that'll keep you out of trouble when you encounter your third one. So thanks for your attention, and I hope you've enjoyed this short presentation.